So what are my top three baits I think you should be using in the month of February? That's what we're gonna talk about right now. So right off, if you wanna watch the, the video from December, you're still gonna be able to use the same lures and use the same techniques. So I'll put a link in the description for the December video. And also, if you can do me a favor, hit that like and subscribe button and become part of the family. So usually I break it down in the northern, middle America, and then the southern states. If you're up north, you're dealing with lots of snow, ice, and so forth. So it's really kind of hard for me to tell you what you should be using up there. If you're ice fishing, it's just not something that I'm that I ha I haven't done in years. When I lived in Michigan, I did some ice fishing, but you're using small jigs, tipped stuff. So that's uh, it's up and down. So I'm not going to be really talking about the northern part of the country. In middle America and in the southern states, our fish are lethargic. The water is cold, but they are starting to transition and possibly spawn if you're in the southern states. So really, we're just gonna talk about middle America and the southern states. And while there's a lot of baits that are gonna work, like your flat-sided or regular crankbaits, which I would suggest to use, I'm gonna try to give you three baits that I think will help you catch fish right away. But you need open water, and if you're in the middle of the country, you're gonna look be looking for points, because fish are going to stack up on there. They're gonna to start to move slightly inwards, especially if you're in the southern states. If you're here down, down here in Florida, the spawn is happening and w the baits I'm going to tell you are working because everybody I know and myself are flat out smashing them with these baits. But if you're using a crankbait or a flat sided crankbait, slow down. Let that bait get to the bottom and bounce it off the bottom as much as possible, but not a fast and aggressive retrieval speed in. Slow it down. Let it bounce and just stop it. A few reels in and stop it. Let it grind on the bottom. I know that's a horrible word to say, but let it bounce off the bottom and stir up a little bit of a commotion because bass are not gonna go actively go out and target fast moving baits. It's not what they're looking for. It's also not what they're seeing. Bass are lethargic and so are the forage fish. They're not screaming in and out of pockets. They're getting back there, waiting for the sun to come up, hopefully get some warmer water, and then they'll push out. Bass will be waiting on that outside of it to ambush those fish. They are looking for points. They're looking for spots that at when the water does warm up that they can go and spawn. So look for those points and banks right away and find fish. Now in middle America, the three baits I think you should be using, the number one I think you should be using is a suspending jerk bait. I said that last month, but this is a month, or this is a bait that is extremely good in very cold water. You're probably dealing with that 45, 40-ish water right now, just about to freeze, but it isn't freezing. And when you make that cast, give it a couple different ways of retrieving it in. You can twitch it in very slowly, or make a couple reels in and pause it, or make a, make a couple reels, and then twitch it a couple times and pause it. The key is the pause. That's the key when you're fishing a suspending twitch bait or a suspending jerk bait. You want that bait to run and then just pause in that water column. That that bass will see it from a distance, hopefully attack it, and then you're, you're good as gold. But change up your retrieval cadence until you find what's working. There's lots of different ways like I just said. My second bait I think you should be using is a lipless crankbait. Now this is not something that you're going to make a cast and rip it through like you're going through grass. You're going to do a slow almost yo-yo retrieval where you're just going to lift that rod up from seven to above your head so that bait slowly goes up and then dives down. You don't want to be ripping it through. Don't do fast rips. Make it slow. Again, these fish are lethargic. They'll hear that lipless crankbait and they'll come, hopefully come eat it. And my third bait I think you should be using is a small swim bait on a jig head. And in this case, just cast it and slowly retrieve it in. You want that bait to kind of hug the bottom right now. You'll find fish in that 10 to 12 foot range. They are going to move closer to the shore as the water gets warmer during the day. But as it gets cooler, they're going to they're gonna push back into those deeper areas. So a small swim bait on a really good jig head is going to be very successful for you. Now down in the southern states, I can only tell you what I know is working exactly right now. Here in Florida, my first bait is a chatterbait. Now we have a bluegill spawn that usually happens kind of in March and April, usually March-ish. But right now in February, they're still targeting baits that are moving. Now I suggest that you put a really good swim bait on the back of that trailer. And for me, there's only one, there's a few that I use, but 
to be honest, there's only one that I use consistently. It's the Smash Tech Blade Aid, and it has a very thin tail that has exceptional action. Pairing the Blade Aid on a jackhammer is as good as it gets. Now, down here, you're not, again, you're not reeling it really fast. You're letting the blade do the work, but also at times, stop it. Just let it fall and let the blade do its thing, the back and forth. I know that looks like John Cena, but I'm not. Let that blade work down as it, go it goes down towards the seafloor. That will entice strikes, slight bounces, slight rips of your, your rod. Not giant rips, but twitches. So it makes a different action and different sound as it's coming back. Right now, the chatterbait is as good as it gets down here. And I can tell you, with full confidence, there's only two baits I'm using right now, and I haven't made many videos of it, because you guys don't watch the videos I make about me fishing, and I don't know if I should be filming them. Maybe I will next week. But when I say I am crushing them right now, I mean full on crushing. The end of January has been the best fishing I've ever done, with several, maybe 25 or 30 over eight, a couple tens already, and a lot of sixes, hundreds of sixes. It's been the best time of the year I've ever fished. But I'm gonna give you a little tip. I'm fishing before fronts. I should have said this at the beginning. If you have a front coming in, fish before that front, let that front come through, and then fish directly after it. I'm really particular about the times I'm going fishing right now because I want to fish before it gets really cold. I know that barometer is going to change, and if the barometer is changing, there's certain times those fish will eat more. So I'm looking for those prefrontal fishing and fishing very hard during those times. So get out of chatterbait and get out before it gets cold, and I'm sure you're going to smash them. My second bait is essential this time of year. It's a suspending jerk bait, just like in the middle, middle of the country. A suspending jerk bait is just, it's crucial right now. It's It can be used during the summer and ripped in, but during the winter, it just works great. When that water is cold, a suspending jerk bait is phenomenal, or twitch bait, whatever you want to call it. But that bait just is great because you can do different things to trigger bites. You can reel it a little bit faster if you think the fish are following it. You can stop and pause it and let that bait just stay in that strike zone and that water column or you can be real finessey and just slow down everything and twitch twitch pause and just let the bait do its work so my second bait is a suspending jerk bait now my third is one that just is designed to catch big bass if you're in a time where the bass are spawning and in for us right now most of the fish that we're catching or i'm catching are staging in lily pads they're not moving quite up front to do their thing they're staging in that three to five foot water and what I'm doing is I'm flipping or some people call it punching I like punching better lily pads with a with a jig and for a trailer I'm usually using some sort of creature beaver style bait now there's tons of those that you can use you can pick the one that you like. I just want, that, want one that has two really giant flappy appendages. I want that bait as it falls down to those, those things to do this. I want it to make as much commotion on the way down and then pop it up. Now I'm not making, I'm making specific casts to certain areas. Finding a bunch of lily pads and I'm trying to find a hole where I think those fish are gonna be hiding underneath. Flip into it with a bait caster, mind you, and just shake my rod and let that bait, that jig go up and down. And then if I don't find anything underneath it, I move to the next area. And while normally the, everybody who does these top three baits constantly the, constantly is telling you what baits I think you should use, I don't, I'm trying not to do that. I try to generalize the whole thing because there might be a certain jerk bait that you like over the one I like. I will say I have preferences in certain lures. And in this case, in the jig, I'm using a lot of Thunderhawk lures grunt. And the reason why I use that is because I have that code that saves me 30%. You can use the code, get your fish on 30 and save 30%. But it also has a weak guard. And I can put a good beaver style bait on the back of it and really work it through those holes in the lily pads to catch absolute stuff. Duds. February is a time where if you're down here or you're in Texas or Louisiana, you're probably starting to see a little bit of the spawn starting to happen, unless you get a really massive cold front like we did last year. I should say, as I film this, we're having a really serious cold front outside and it's going to get very cold this weekend. So I'm going to fish today because I know that front's happening on Saturday and Sunday and today's Friday. So today I'm going to go fish in some certain areas where I know where there's lily pads and some structure. I'm just going to try to find those bass that are looking to move up, eat, or even spawn. So get out there and go fishing in February. Do me a favor, tell me what three lures you're going to use because I always like to see it and I like to hear what you're using. And then it helps me for next year too. So I really do appreciate when you guys put comments in the comment section. Hope you have a great February. Thanks for hitting
hit that like and subscribe button. Make sure you take a kid fishing. Get your fish on. I will talk to you very, very soon. Thanks for watching. I'll talk to you soon. Cheers.